Starting soon, mga kapidax, please share this live, like this live, no? We have a very exciting webinar that will be happening in just a couple of moments. For now, enjoy the music. And yeah, share natin yung live, guys. Ma, uh, exciting webinar. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we are live. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PDAX Weekly Webinars. No? For if it's your first time joining us, welcome. No? My name is Kyle, and today and then every webinar, we seek to educate everyone about the market of the cryptocurrency world. And I'm sure lots are very familiar that uh, last week, we launched our seven new coins onto the PDAX platform. Uh, that namely Uniswap, Compound, the Graph Token, Aave, ano pa ba? Uh, uh, see, it's so much nalimutan ka na, no? Pero Unicom, Aave, GRT, uh, help na, tulong naman guys, pa-coach naman, pa-coach. See, mahiyan naman ako sa sarili ko. Uh, pero, the point is we've launched seven new coins onto the platform and we're so excited to start this journey with you. No? And for today's PDAX webinar, no? we've, named, we've had them already as a previous guest, but our friends from Open Journal are joining us yet again to present and share their views, their expert opinions on uh, the market and what's happening. No? And um, through this, we hope that you, our fellow listeners and fellow community, uh, will be able to learn more about the market and act accordingly on what to do for the next few days or weeks or uh, strategy. No? So for now, let me share just uh, share my screen. No? I wanted to share my screen to uh, talk about uh, some of the Sorry. Talk about some promos that we have currently, you know? All right, all right, all right. So we have here, all right, we have here some three reminders for our community and for those that are just tuning in now. We have our no trading fee promo that's happening from July 3 to 4. Uh, today is the last day to join our free crypto giveaway. More, for more info, you can check out our Facebook page. No? And finally, until July 4, you can still receive a 500 peso cashback and free cash in via Grab Pay. So if I were you, so late in the end, so that you can get 500 pesos from uh, Grab Pay just by cashing in 5,000 minimum and experience free cash in. No? So I hope everyone is able to experience this uh, wonderful weekend that's going to happen uh, for for PDAX. No? So with that, with that being said, I think everyone is very interested already in uh, learning more about the market. And I'll uh, excuse myself in a bit, but I'll just welcome here Joseph from Open Journal. Welcome, Joseph. Welcome back. What's up, everyone? What's up, PDAX? Hey, Kyle. Thank you for having me. Kamusta? Ay naman. I hope, uh, I hope everyone here is also excited. No? Uh, there's... Javi's here. Very Javi exciting. and Matt are here also, yeah. What's up, Havs? What's up, Matt? What's up, Open Journal? What's up, PDAX? What's up, Kainvesta? Hello to everybody. Hello, hello. Um, if we could have everyone well, like the video, share this live in, let's get more people to watch the video. No? Uh, free nuggets of wisdom right here. No? And yeah.
All right. Nice. So, Joseph, I think we can uh, begin uh, with your presentation as well. So, every for everyone who's just tuning in now, welcome. And uh, Joseph from Open Journal will be sharing a presentation on what more current market outlook for the crypto industry and also what are his thoughts and what he may want to share with us all. So go ahead, Joseph. I'll just share this. Yep, you can share my screen. I think it should work. Yep, it's there. Great. All good. Everyone can see the screen. Nice. Perfect. Thanks, Kyle. Again, everyone, good afternoon. TGIF, malapit na po yung weekend. But thank you for taking time to come to this session and be able to learn with us today. And thank you, PDAX, for this opportunity to be able to help the trading investing community here in the Philippines. And by doing that, we hope to add some value. For those of you who don't know me, hi, good afternoon. I'm Joseph from Open Journal. So, on behalf of Open Journal and our team at Buhawi Investment Management, with my partners and colleagues, Javi, Matt, and Jessa, welcome. And to those of you not yet too familiar with Open Journal, we are essentially a private access subscription and trading community which is open access to our firm and fund, Buhawi Investment Management. And maybe Matt can help in the comment section, send some relevant links your way if you're interested to learn more about the Open Journal family. So without further ado, we can begin our presentation today. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of things on your mind regarding the market. Grabe yung crypto market lately. Choppy, volatile, range bound, mahirap po i-trade. San na po tayo? Are we in a bearish environment, a bullish environment? Pati yung ibang mga altcoins ang hirap-hirap i-trade. I'm sure a lot of us are wondering how we can best understand these opportunities as well as participate and continue making money in cryptocurrency because we're all here definitely to learn and improve our trading system and outlook, but we're also all here to make money, become more astute and informed traders and investors. So my talk today will have three major parts. The first part will talk about macro. We're going to take a look at yields and the U.S. market and how those are very important components of intermarket analysis to understand and really appreciate cryptocurrency and the entire space better. Secondly, we'll talk about some fundamentals, some updates on on-chain analytics to be able to see and check under the hood what's really happening with Bitcoin and crypto. And then lastly, your most awaited part, we're going to give our watch list as well as taking a look at the technicals or looking at what the chart is telling us. And then lastly, we have some surprise promos and announcements we're here and excited to share. So I hope everyone can definitely stay until the end, value adding po ito. So just before I begin, just wanted to announce quickly that I'm sure some of you saw in the comment section, minsan may mga scammers, may mga bots, and we only have one official open journal page. You can see on the meme on the lower right. And if anyone trying to impersonate open journal or any of the core members, myself, Javi, or Matt, that's not legit. Mga scammers po yun. So we should all exercise being cognizant and judicious about navigating social media. Marami pong mga scams, a lot of people trying to take advantage of people who don't know as much. So we have to be guard up po about that. So let's begin. Cut the foreplay. We're going to get straight onto it to answer the questions you have on your minds. So first off, we need to take a look at certain important macroeconomic and, ma and market-related updates. So the first is that 
the Federal Reserve, shared by Jay Powell, Jerome Powell in the U.S., they had an announcement the past few weeks about inflationary expectations. And to put it very simply, they plan to have rate hikes or an increase in the rates by end of 2023. And this is quite earlier compared to their initial plan of 2024. They're also planning to scale back their purchases of bonds. And this is essentially a form of the central bank tightening and, and increasing the pace of their tightening. And the main consequence or result of such is likely an inflationary expectation over the next two, three years being upgraded. In our past few talks, we sort of were hinting at that. But in this FOMC announcement summary, this is something that's going to be made quite quicker or something that's relatively affirmed. And you might be wondering, what does this have to do with cryptocurrency? And the simple answer is that an inflationary environment is essentially bad for risk assets. Maybe not in a perfect correlation or lockstep sort of way, but it serves as a potential risk and headwind to the risk asset party. And included in risk assets are, of course, equities, as well as equities in emerging markets like the Philippines, Thailand, Brazil, Indonesia, and of course, cryptocurrency. Even though alam naman natin, guys, that theoretically, every Tito, Vic, and Joey, every Bitcoin, DeFi, Maxi is waiting for that day where we have full-on decoupling. Decoupling between the cryptocurrency market and traditional financial asset classes. Sana all. We wish we could have that by tomorrow. But the reality of the cryptocurrency market is that Historically speaking, and in terms of probability, nadadamay pa rin siya with equities and risk assets. Not to a perfect correlation or extent, but generally speaking, in terms of sentiment. Simply because the rate we're in, in terms of cryptocurrency adoption and rolling out all sorts of awesome and interesting blockchain projects, whether that be DeFi, NFTs, and all of the other different awesome use cases, we're still not yet at that level of adoption wherein we can truly see that independence and decoupling within the traditional financial asset classes and system. So what we can expect from these inflationary expectations, hindi po to nosebleed, I will make this as beginner-friendly and simple as possible. I recognize that a lot of you might be new to the space. Kaya shout out, guys. Shout out sa lahat ng mga newbies, mga new to trading, new to equities, but more importantly, bago sa crypto market. Welcome, everyone, and definitely be proud to be taking the courage and initiative to enter the space. So kung may mga newbies dyan, guys, please put hashtag newbie. Wala pong hiya. It's all good. We're all here to learn and improve together. Hashtag newbie sa lahat ng mga bago in the comments. Go lang so we can recognize you. So given these potential inflationary expectations in our horizon, this has an effect on the TNX or the 10-year bond yield in the United States. And you might be wondering, what does this have to do with cryptocurrency? But the first bucket of macro, we're going to talk about bond yields because we have to understand that, generally speaking, when bond yields go up, it's also a risk off or a headwind for risk assets. Like I mentioned earlier, equities and cryptocurrency, which is why a lot of professional hedge fund managers around the world, a lot of the best traders, and a lot of the pundits paving the way for thought leadership 
in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space, people like Raul Pal, people like Peter Brandt, people like um, Plan B, etc. Everyone is watching the TNX. And simply given these inflationary expectations painted and characterized by the Federal Reserve and the central banks around the world, primarily in the United States, two options lang naman yan. Either the yields are going to go up or it's going to come lower. And at least for now, the general sentiment is that people believe inflation is still transitory. Ano po yung transitory? What does that mean? Nosebleed naman, parang college class. Transitory simply means it's not sustainable. Temporary lang po siya. It's not here to stay. Transitory inflation is as opposed sustained inflation, which is something like I characterized pretty bad for risk assets across the board, including cryptocurrency. So I guess, you know, the market wants to be optimistic. Yes, they still believe inflation can be transitory. But like we say in Open Journal, OGK, only God knows. We need to be able to see how the TNX and how the markets are going to react to this news, which is why prior to the rally we saw in crypto the past three days, we saw that leg down towards that support level of around 30K levels for Bitcoin and a bit sub 2K for Ethereum. Because to an extent, the market may have been spooked by that inflationary expectation, among other different variables. So why is the TNX important? The TNX is important because the Federal Reserve and central banks don't want yields to go up because they want to justify the valuation and they also want to keep people invested in risk assets, in your equity market. Which is why, if you remember what we've been talking about the past few quarters, the Fed has been printing a lot of money and using that to buy bonds. Because when they buy bonds, you have to understand as well that bond prices and bond yields are inversely related. So as they buy more bonds and there's a greater demand for it, the bond prices increase while your yields go lower, which is precisely their goal. They want to keep the TNX at a level where it's still healthy, chill pa siya. It's not going to reach a breaking point, which is going to break the back of the financial system. And you might be wondering, paano yan mangyayari? What's the effect? An oversimplification is that the TNX or your 10-year bond yield in the United States is a proxy of inflationary expectations and essentially the cost of debt in the system. Think about debt, something as simple as maybe a student loan, credit card loans, individual or retail loans towards corporate loans, institutional loans, countrywide loans on a large scale with the IMF, other banks, and other large corporations. The TNX is essentially a benchmark standard for the cost of debt that affects all of the things I just mentioned. Maybe not in a perfect correlation or lockstep sort of way, but generally speaking in terms of the expectation of this particular debt. And we also have to understand that Ever since COVID happened, we've had more debt in the system for obvious reasons. Communities and families having to borrow money to make life go by, given there are a lot of unforeseen medical expenses, even expenses for technology, given the tectonic shift towards work from home and the digitalization of a lot of businesses that really have to pivot their business model to really adjust to the new normal we're seeing. So what this chart simply shows is that the level of the TNX, when it was a breaking point, Q4 2019, was roughly between 2.95 to 3.22. 
However, we would argue and we would posit that the level today in this new sense of normalcy in society could be a lower threshold, meaning the level in which yields go up mas mababa na yan than those levels in the past given the huge amount of debt in the system, individually, institutionally, on a macroeconomic and country continent wild scale, right? And this is something that we simply have to really watch and take note of, which is why, at least for our team and in Open Journal, the TNX, which you can check on Trading View platform, you can see the level of the TNX. If I'm not mistaken, around right now, it's around at 1.4, 1.5 levels. This is the TNX. This is how it looks like. And simply right now, the most recent candle we had, we're sitting on our 100-day EMA support. Um, we're yet to see where we go here, whether we're going to break out from that channel and have a follow through higher, which might lead to a bubble bursting in this whole risk asset party, probabilistic speaking, or we're going to see it break down from that support. We're yet to see what happens. And to be very clear, it's not necessarily what happens with the TNX, with yields, with the news of the Fed, etc. It's really about how the cryptocurrency markets react to these events. So again, to be very clear, it's not like a rule that we have to follow 100%, not to a perfect correlation. This is one of the intermarket tools we have to look at and stay abreast of to really understand the space much deeper. So I'll leave the TNX for now, and we're going to talk about the US market, the second major component of intermarket analysis we have to really appreciate and understand when we talk about cryptocurrency. So simply put, it's the largest market in the world, and at least in terms of valuation, looking at P-E ratio, we're really seeing high valuations across the board. And if you take a look at the charts, we're still on an arguably healthy uptrend, albeit that fundamental valuation. But it's really not, not about high valuations that end the bull market, but it's really about higher rates. So I hope you're seeing the bigger picture. They announced the fact that we're going to have inflationary expectations. Yields are now at make or break levels. We're at a support where we're yet to see if we're going to follow through higher and break out or we're going to break down. And fundamentally speaking, um, a lot of these tech companies are also at peak valuation despite the moves in the market. So this is something we have to be wary of in the bigger picture. Now, we also have to understand that tech stocks or tech companies are really more sensitive as well to movements in the bond yield, pretty much given that a lot of their structure and valuation and financial statements are heavily um, back-ended. And what that simply means is a lot of these tech companies like the FANG, Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, MicroStrategy, et cetera, they're really looking at growth and potential compared to, let's say, other companies like McDonald's or Nike or Chipotle or Xiaomi or other um, kinds of consumer goods that pretty much play a sales game Labanan ng margin and profitability. And unlike tech stocks, aren't that forward looking in terms of growth and what they could be in the future versus where they are today, what they might sell in the coming quarter or in the next year. So that's just something to be wary of. And just a pro tip if you want to understand the US market more, you can take a look at your NDX or NASDAQ, 
your DJI or your Dow or your SPX, your S&P 500. These are the um, primary or most important or biggest indices in the U.S. market. But if you want to get a vibe of the tech sector, you can pretty much check out FANG, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, given that they're the heavyweights, sila yung big kids on the block that pretty much move the U.S. market and indices. Now, we talked about that peak valuation for now, which may or may not come to fruition, given if you take a look at the charts, the U.S. market is still relatively on a healthy uptrend despite that bias. But if we take a look under the hood, despite all-time highs in these indices, Mark Minervini pointed out on Twitter, and this is something that we have to note, it's not a broad-based move higher, meaning a lot of stocks on NASDAQ are actually below their 50-day or their 200-day already. And to those of you trading the U.S. market, you might be wondering, Pakat naman si index, but how come I'm not making as much money as I think I should be? Or I'm not making as much money as the index portrays to be? And simply because the move we're seeing across the board is not a broad-based move higher. These are certain potential cracks or red flags. And don't get me wrong, we're not saying sell everything, mamba out from the market, sell all of your positions. No, at least for our community and our fund, we're still heavily invested in um, the space, equities, and cryptocurrency as well. What we mean to say is now is not the time to invest blindly, YOLO, Mr. and Mrs. Long Term naman ako, bahala na po. We need to be guard up given the potential weakness we might see and potential corrections and dark clouds we might see for the remainder second half of the year 2021. Now, if you take a look as well, this slide also shows the S&P, for example, how around more than half are actually, um, only more than half are actually above their 50-day moving average, meaning this reinforces what Mark Minervini said around a month ago about it not being a broad-based move higher. And what we can really expect here is that your hit ratio as a trader, meaning your batting average, your win rate over your losing rate, the amount of trades you get correctly versus the how, how many trades you get wrong. Meaning, if I get 6 out of 10 trades, my hit ratio is 60%. If I got only 4 profitable green trades out of 10, my hit ratio is 40%. So what we can expect in an environment where it's not a broad-based move higher... It's more challenging to trade, and even more, you have to focus on bottom-up opportunities and issues with relative strength, like SOXL, for example, taking a look at certain semiconductors and other components within that particular industry, generally speaking, for the U.S. Now, just another fun fact or a pro tip, the average or healthy hit ratio of a trader is... 40 to 60 percent, meaning anything more than that, maybe you could be over trading and anything below than that, you might have a problem with your stock selection. So 40 to 60 percent historically and what majority of the best traders and fund managers characterize is really the sweet spot. So to those of you trading markets, the U.S. market, or even the Philippine market, emerging markets by extension, be wary about your hit rate dropping. And even more so, please, please honor your stops, guys. Like I mentioned, 
we're not in a long-term pikit mata, buy and hold, bahala na po si Lord, pabanjing banjing sa labas, planting kamote. No, it's even more important. We have to monitor our positions to make sure we can protect the gains we have and secure them and also prevent small losses from becoming big losses. We don't want a stage one, two more to become worse into a stage four cancer. Now we'll go to the second part of the presentation, talking about certain fundamental attributes of on-chain analytics. And thank you to Glassnode, thank you to Willy Wu for a lot of these charts. And this is essentially good news across the board. Despite the volatility and correction we saw over the past two months in cryptocurrency, when we had that downward decline followed by this range we're in right now, at least in terms of unique users of the Bitcoin network, we're seeing user growth as a result of that, which is something good fundamentally speaking in terms of usage for that technology, people buying and people participating in whatever way, shape and form to transact on the blockchain. The second is in terms of our stable coin ratio oscillator. And what this simply means guys is people who sold their crypto to lock in their gains and went to stable coins like USDC or USDT as dry powder for new opportunities are now starting to get back into crypto. What that means is people who locked in their gains or cut their losses and converted it into a stable coin are now getting more ready to participate with whatever trade plan or time horizon they have. And this is something good because it's a level and degree of investor and trader participation in the cryptocurrency markets. The third one, and this is great news, we're seeing a shift between weak hands and people who really have conviction and strong hands to accumulate or hold it for the longer term. And that's just good news because in any kind of volatile environment subject to huge volatility and price swings, we really want to get rid of those weak hands and people who get shaken out or people who aren't in it for the medium to long term, chupateros or people who are just shaken out of volatility. And it's a bullish indicator for long term bears, those who have diamond hands, practically speaking, to be able to buy and accumulate Bitcoins from those people selling. The lastly is in terms of spot exchange net flows, and we can see that somewhat increasing, which is generally a bullish indicator for participation in these exchanges in the space for spot traders. And it's always good to be able to have institutional and retail participation, especially in periods where sometimes you have days with a lower volume. As a team, we also noticed minsan during weekends, nagdadrift yung presyo ng crypto lower on low volume kasi wala pong participation in any way, shape, and form. But at least in terms of these flows, back into spot exchanges, we're seeing something good as a result of that. And these indicators of on-chain analytics are showing that in the long term, this is something, probabilistically speaking, we could see all-time highs were quite bullish to that regard, at least for the latter half of this year. Matagal pa po yung boxing, guys. We need to, you know, relax. Halfway pa lang tayo sa 2021. I'm sure to those trading, investing, grabe, nakakapagod rin, nakaka-stress, nakakatanda, nakaka-ano, right? I'm sure a lot of you are maybe worried, anxious, eager to see where we go from here. And at least 
good news is likely on the horizon, but definitely we follow price and stick to our trade plan. We all have to do our own research and be judicious in our trade plan to plan the trade and trade the plan. Honor your stops, guys. Don't move your stops. Don't average down. Cut your losers and ride your winners. Let them run. So I'm sure a lot of you magaling na mag-trade, very um, into the space for quite some time. And it's just on a high alert that we're not saying we're risk off. We're saying that at least from the macro, there could be some dark clouds in the horizon for balance of the year. But fundamentally speaking, under the hood of crypto and Bitcoin, it's still nothing to panic about, nothing to likely send us spiraling tomorrow for some reason into a bear market. I'm generally speaking, and a lot of what we say is from the lens of technical analysis, having a hit ratio of 70-80%. Wala pong perfect, guys. There's no crystal ball to tell us with absolute certainty ano po yung mangyayari bukas. Kung sana lang alam ko, edi mayaman na ako dati pa, right? And the same goes for you guys. If only we knew with conviction and certainty where price would go and what would happen, we don't need women webinars anymore, we don't need communities, don't need mentors, don't need books, don't need subscriptions, don't need learning. Pero not that easy, we need to put in the work and effort to become profitable traders and investors. Moving on to the third and most awaited component, just looking at technical analysis of some select pairs, as well as just taking a look at potential opportunities we can capitalize on in the coming weeks and months to come. Bitcoin majors, looking at Bitcoin, at least we're below our exponential moving averages for now, but we can see that in terms of your previous low, your support area characterized by the purple rectangle area, we're still cruising within that area. And as Javi and I characterized the past month, what we're seeing in Bitcoin is that this is going to be a long drawn out consolidation, something that might even take until December 2021 or maybe even spill over to Q1 2022, given the technical damage we saw in that sell-off towards the end of May, exacerbated by the use of margin and the unwinding of leverage in the system. To those of you who are following cycle analysis and adhere to Elliott Wave, we're still arguably within our Wave 4, which typically retraces 23.6% or 38.2% off that swing of your Wave 3. And the good news is that at least from a technical analysis, cycle analysis perspective, we still see new highs in the horizon for balance of the year. But of course, this could be invalidated at any time if we see prices and the market tip her hand in the unfavor unfavorable and opposite direction. I also just wanted to note, for those of you who are um, fans or practitioners of classical technical analysis, you might think or look at this pattern as some sort of a complex head and shoulders or some sort of head and shoulders of which you have the left shoulder and then the head and then the right shoulder. Though that's something we also initially considered, there was something very interesting that Peter Brandt shared and Peter Brandt is one of the lawless king pundits of classical technical analysis, practicing it the past 50, 60 years already. And we should listen to someone with that track record and experience. 
And this is something interesting to note about head and shoulders patterns, at least in terms of what it really should be and it being an A pattern or something that sticks to stringent standards. The resistance level of your shoulders should essentially overlap with the support of your head. I'll say that again. The resistance level on top of your shoulders, your left shoulder and your right shoulder, that resistance level area should also to an extent overlap or chop with the support level of the head. And what we're seeing, at least in terms of technical analysis, medyo malayo po siya, meaning medyo angat po yung head. I'm not saying this is not a head and shoulders or a legitimate pattern, just being wary about that head and shoulders standard that Peter Brandt characterized as something we should take note of. That's it for Bitcoin. Moving on to Ethereum, at least in terms of Ethereum, showing a bit more relative strength given the degree of that down move. Also still cruising within that previous low or support area, 1A to 2K levels. During the rally we saw the past week, it attempted to break out briefly past your 20-day EMA, which previously was your resistance, then it became your support, then it closed a bit below it. So we're yet to see where we go here with Ethereum. And just another pro tip to those of you using moving averages, which is largely a um, lagging indicator, it works best in a trending environment. So in an, an environment where it's a bit choppy, uncertain, nagsa sideways po yung mercado, it might not be the best tool to use given we understand that nagspa spaghetti po yung EMAs and it's not clear what is happening since hindi siya nagtatrend. And we also have to understand and another DNA of cryptocurrency is that minsan binabastos yung EMA. You have a sharp breakout past an EMA or a sharp breakdown past an EMA and then it has a one-day reversal, sharp volatility in the other direction. So best to use these indicators in confluence with other tools, RSI, ADX, trend lines etc etc to complement your trading system and increase the likelihood of it following through in the direction of your technical bias next up is solana something also showing relative strength and maybe we can see hopefully a breakout past our channel resistance level and go above 26, 27, 28 levels, OGK. Maybe if volume comes in, we can see some sort of bigger upside for Solana. Something that, to be transparent, I don't have personally or for my client fund, but something that caught my attention when I was screening the markets. In this kind of environment, we want to stick to issues with relative strength compared to Bitcoin, compared to ETH, or compared to the general market so that we can really see where the leaders could be. Because in a short-term bear cycle or correction or in a sideways environment, you are going to see leaders emerge even before the market bases out. And when the parabolic move up, the bull cycle, arangkada, pataas happens, these leaders are going to be leading the charge in terms of strength when that happens. Another one is also Matic as well, another interesting favorite and scalability solution for Ethereum, something we're very interested in as well, fundamentally and chart-wise as well. 
it's still, um, at least for this exchange where I pulled the data, we're still cruising above our purple line or our 100-day EMA. And similar to Solana, hopefully we can see some sort of increase in volume and break out in a positive direction to indicate relative strength and an emergence of a bull count or cycle insofar as this pair is concerned. OGK, plan your trade and trade your plan. Be wary about executing your particular system. But syempre, as traders, we also know 80-20 naman yan. 80% priming and psychology and 20% lang naman yung execution. When you pull the trigger or implement your system, being wary about your emotional sensitivities is far more important and can even influence negatively your trading system, no matter how magaling or sophisticated your trade plan is, if sabog yung psychology mo and you're not mentally prepared and ready and healthy, you won't be able to sustainably execute and plan out your trade. Lastly is Axie. I'm sure a lot of you sobrang interesting, sobrang solid, given Axie Infinity, a play-to-earn game which has been around and gaining a lot of traction, not only sentiment-wise here in the Philippines, where a lot of blue-collar workers have been starting to play it and even diversify into it as an additional revenue stream, but even in terms of the world in Southeast Asia, the Philippines, we've been getting a lot of shout-outs and features as being very influential and heavy and contributing to the Axie environment and the world in so far as this game and cryptocurrency and technology is concerned. But also fundamentally, when I was checking some studies a while ago, which Javi shared in our free open journal light group, you can check the link below to check it out. There's a solid in-depth update about Axie there. It actually overtook NBA Top Shot already as the biggest so far NFT collectibles. And for someone who's also been trading um, NBA moments when I line up for packs at wee hours in the morning, it's cool to see that shift in potential for this particular technology. You have a play-to-earn-win game. You have huge amounts of increase in cash flow and growth, fundamentally speaking. Sentiment-wise, you have a lot of people getting into it. You have a lot of retail participating, getting into it. I won't get too much into it. Maybe we can save that for another time. You can check out have this post in Open Journal. Solid update there. But balik po muna tayo sa technicals. You can see a clear breakout here of that sort of diagonal resistance level. And clearly price is above all of your moving averages, which is indicative of at least profitability and it being on at least a short-term uptrend. So I would operationalize this trade plan by maybe buying the pullback to your EMAs or being able to operationalize an intraday weakness or bullish divergence setup to get an intraday low to be able to trade it. So these are the opportunities we saw and up to you to really plan the trade and trade the plan and operationalize your opportunities. Before we get on to talk about your q and I'm sure a lot of you have questions percolating in your minds. We just have a few special announcements. Care of Open Journal and thank you to our partner, Investa for these solid promos. These are valid till end of month. Guys, you can take a screenshot or a photo of these three promos. Sako po lahat. If wala pa kayong Open Journal subscription, wala kayong Investa Prime Elite, you can take this promo. 10% off po ito. 
you get the best of both worlds. As a professional trader and fund manager, I really use Invest the Prime Elite for the watcher feature, the text updates when I'm not able to watch market all the time, the journal, but most importantly, the elite coaching sessions, which are on a monthly basis, na sobrang solid. Sometimes we also have features providing content there as well. The second promo is, if you are Team Prime, shout out sa mga ka-investa dito na Team Prime who are part of Prime Elite, may access kayo 10% discount for Open Journal if you are Team Prime. You can just use the promo code here below. You can take a photo if you want para you don't forget it. Lastly, shout out to the Open Journal family. I'm sure some of you are here participating, supporting, learning today. Idol kayo. And good news to the Open Journal fam. If you want to partake, Prime Elite may 10% rin for you guys. So you can take a look at the promo code below. So again, just a quick run through of the promos we have. For any questions about this, you can send me a message on Investagrams or on Instagram. We have the following promos. Now with that, I just wanted to say maraming salamat. Thank you for indulging me on your Friday night and afternoon. I now open the floor for a few questions. I also want to be wary and cognizant about your time as well so we can end on time. Thank you, PDAX. Thank you to everyone here supporting, listening. Hope you learned and opening the floor for questions. But before that, Javi has been grinding to post a lot of crypto-related, blockchain-related updates on our free open journal light group entitled What Every Trader can, can learn from the recent crash. 101 key crypto and blockchain learnings that will help every trader or investor and the insights from the crash. Ongoing pa ito, marabing pabaon si Javi, and you can really join our free open journal light group on Investa to back read all of that sweet content and level up your crypto and blockchain knowledge. So if you guys can check it out and really put in the link below so that you guys can join, I'll approve your access right away. With that, you can stay connected with me on Instagram or in Investagrams if you want. My handle is there, Broseph Joseph with an F. Check out Open Journal as well. Maraming salamat. Thank you, PDAX. Thank you for your time. Opening the floor for your questions. We can take a few. All right. Hi. Thank you so much, Joseph, for your presentation. Learned so much as well. Um, I hope everyone here uh, has some questions to ask from Joseph. Or uh, if you want to have any clarifications or want to um, ask more from Joseph, please feel free, mga kapita. Sure, guys. Wag mahiya. No such thing as a newbie or stupid question. The only stupid questions are the ones left unasked. I don't buy it. I'll answer to the best of my ability what I can ask. Game, guys. Let's go. Game, 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 game. We have a few minutes left. And I'm sure also you guys have your weekend ahead. Don't want to take too much of that time as well. Pero any questions? G lang, anything was unclear. Cool. Um, bro, Kyle, we have one question here about sure, from sure. Uh, Bu. I don't want to butcher your name. I'm sorry. From Valoria. What are your recommended indicators? So maybe you can pin that. Cool. Awesome. Um, my recommended indicators are exponential moving averages. I'm primarily a swing trader, personally, as well as for the fund. I use a 20, 50, 100 day EMA. I also use RSI. I also use ADX to be able to determine the maturity of the trend. And lastly, I use Fibonacci extensions and retracements. 
So to recap, EMAs, RSI, ADX, and Fibonacci. Thank you for your question, Bill. Uh, Coin Coin says, thanks for ADX, Rosa. Richard has a cool question, very relevant as well. What do you think about the impact of the crackdown in China to the market? So this is something that a lot of CT or crypto Twitterverse has been talking about, blaming the Chinese government and stuff like that. Though I do understand that from a hash rate or from a minor percentage 60 percent of them yes are heavily literally or geographically headquartered in china and you have the government banning and cracking down this in certain ways my personal opinion is that it doesn't really matter what the headline or the fear is what matters is how crypto price reacts to all of this news all of these different catalysts and things like that. And yes, it could be a headwind, but from a practicali practicality perspective, to be completely honest, they discard ng mga miners. Eh. I mean, they'll probably move to Taiwan or the US or do it under the radar despite the cracking down. I mean, these guys are smart. They know what they're doing. They're making money from it. I don't think some legislation which kind of has been happening for quite some time this crackdown will really prevent it from happening maybe it could but i wouldn't say it's the primary factor as to why crypto has kind of dipped the past month when we saw that leverage and margin exacerbated crash i hope i was able to answer your question and that was able to add value Few more questions. We can take a few more to indulge sure, yeah. people in time as well. So we can take um, Alfie. Going back to my question earlier, what should we do about Musk jumpers since it always break the initial strategies we have set in place? The trajectory is solid. Then minutes after the tweet, everything changes. So Alfie, I feel your pain, bro. Sometimes these things happen, but to be very, very clear, and this is something I characterized in a previous talk as well, the whole Elon Musk crypto Twitter shebang, it's more of a ripple and not a big wave that really moves prices lower. I primarily would argue the yields. I would argue US market weakness. I would argue risk assets being affected more than a singular tweet per se. Though, yes, there might be a small degree of correlation. It's not the underlying wave or current pushing the market lower. Like I characterized previously, what we saw during the latest crash or sharp correction was unwinding of leverage causing that technical damage unfortunately on the chart. So I hope to answer your question, but if the presupposition behind the question was, how do I deal with the volatility? A lot of things happening. We have a solid game plan. We have a trajectory of where we wanna go, then shit happens. Um, such as the volatility, volatility of the cryptocurrency markets. That's why we have stop losses. That's why we have to use trail stops to make sure our gains don't become losses. That's why we need to have risk management and position sizing to make sure that our portfolio will be able to survive any drawdown. Kasi alam naman natin, guys, those of us familiar with trading equities, 5 to 8% down on the index or on a blue chip is kind of scary. But here in crypto, we're seeing 20, 30, my God, 40% swings in hours. And it's kind of scary. If there's no volatility, where can the money be made? Volatility is the price we pay for super performance. 
maybe we can take two more. Um, let me just scan the questions that might add the most value to majority 70, 80% of people. Antonino, what can I say about the new coins in PDAX? Guys, palakpakan po tayo to PDAX for the new coins. As a personal trader using PDAX and as our fund in Buhawi using the OTC services of PDAX, sobrang solid, sobrang awesome. Very thankful for that liquidity and opportunity. But when I was scanning the charts, and this is technically speaking, Majority of them pretty much look like Bitcoin and ETH. They're at that crucial support level, which was tested prior to the bounce we saw. And if I am not mistaken, at least an hour ago, the most relative strength there, if I had to choose looking at EMAs, was Comp. Given that it's the only one, at least an hour ago, above your 20-day resistance now turned support. So again, thank you, PDAX, for that liquidity and variation. Looking forward to more surprises in store. You guys are great. And we're all here to support and make things better. Solid. Last question from Victor. Hi, Joseph. Can you pin that post so I, I, people can just read it? Sure. Great question, Victor. So I think, um, like I mentioned in the first third of the talk, it's not necessarily what happens to the U.S. market, but how cryptocurrency reacts to it. Historically speaking, if we backtest, pag na GG si U.S. market, pag Nag bear cycle or mag break down si US market. Guys, knock on wood, hindi yan mangyari. Who wants that to happen? There would be a spillover effect to risk assets like cryptocurrency, unfortunately. That's major probability wise. Maybe we'll see some relative strength and leaders emerge. So that would be good and interesting. But generally speaking, madadamay siya. Not in a perfect degree of correlation, not in perfect lockstep, but to a heavy degree, given that crypto is a risk asset. But in terms of this whole U.S. economy opening up, are pe people going to jump from crypto to stocks? I don't know. We have to follow volume. We follow institutional sponsorship. We follow the whales to see where they're gravitating at. But at least in terms of overall market strength, we still look a lot to the U.S. market, given that at least for now, it's sustaining these levels it's at, at least for the interim. Whether or not there might be a liquidity jump from other asset classes to U.S. market, we're yet to see. Let's follow volume. Let's follow thought leadership. Let's follow big institutions and whales who are likely to tip their hand, move markets, and as a result, retail traders will be able to follow suit. So with that said, bro, Kyle, I think we're good for now. Sa ngayon, uh, medyo overtime a little bit, and I just want to respect everyone's time as well. If you have other questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, or Investagrams at Brosef Joseph with an F. Maraming salamat. Yes. Happy, happy weekend. DGIF. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. And um, just so before we end, thank you again, everyone, for watching. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week. I'll just plug here once again that we have the, this weekend. Uh, today is the last day to join our free crypto giveaway. Uh, this weekend, we'll be having no trading fee promo over the weekend on both our app and our exchange. And until July 4, na lang yung 500 peso cash back natin and free cash in via GrabPay. So, with that being said, thank you again, Joseph. Thank you, mga kapidax. We'll see you thank next you. week for another news roundup. So, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a good weekend.